Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we take a look back at Navy Week along the Detroit River, tour the Detroit Historical Museum, and then we enjoy a taste of Africa at the African World Festival. So stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. The Detroit Riverwalk is a great place to have events, which is why it makes so much sense that the U.S. Navy picked Detroit as one of their stops to help celebrate Navy Week and celebrate the War of 1812 Bicentennial with public tours of ships in the D. this wonderful event that we're having along the Detroit River. It's been a spectacular week. It's been a great opportunity for the Navy to come back to the Great Lakes, come back to the great city of Detroit. We're commemorating the bicentennial of the War of 1812. The War of 1812 was really when our country decided that we were going to become a maritime nation. And uh, the Navy's working to keep the seas free and open for commerce 100% of the time. Uh, that began in the War of 1812. This is the U.S. Brig Niagara. It's a replica ship of the Brig Niagara that fought at the Battle of Lake Erie in the War of 1812. The War of 1812 was fought here in the Great Lakes. Detroit has specific history there. That's one of the reasons why we knew the Bicentennial was a great chance to bring ships back to spend time interacting with the, with, the, uh, with the citizens and with the people of Detroit. And how, how has it been? Have you... It's been incredible. The energy of Metro Detroit, I've spoken with dozens and dozens of sailors and they all say the same thing. Uh, you can't walk a half a block in this city in your uniform without someone from Detroit coming up and thanking you for your service and wanting to learn what you do come down and see the ships, to interact with the sailors, and, and uh, see what kind of great work they do and the responsibilities that are given to such great people at so young an age. So this is the replica, and I see people are lined up early in the morning to get on board and tour. All day, every day. It's been spectacular down here in the waterfront. Tell me, DeWert, is, is that also a replica, or is that something that's in use today? USS DeWert is an mm -hmm. Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate. Just came back from deployment overseas, uh, doing counter-piracy operations, uh, continuing to keep the seas free today for commerce. And then we've also got something over our neighbors in Canada. What's, what, what is that ship? We're gonna the go Canadian on. frigate Ville de Quebec. In the War of 1812, the Canadians were our enemies and now uh, our relationship with Canada is the envy of the entire world. We've got another ship that's arriving today, the Hurricane. What is that? Why significance of that? USS event? Hurricane is a coastal patrol okay. craft. A uh, crew of 30, they do a lot of important work in counter-piracy, counter-terrorism. As Americans, we've always considered ourselves protected from the oceans, never mm -hmm. threatened from them, mm -hmm. and that's all about the Navy. That began in 1812. This is the silent precision rifle drill team. Do it all without command. We're a part of the Ceremony Honor Guard, and this is just another um, aspect to the Honor Guard. We tour around the country, and mm -hmm. as you see, all these little kids just saw that. I feel like I'm on board the set of the Pirates of the Caribbean, but this is actually the U.S. Brig Niagara, and it's a replica of an 1812 warship. Open for tours. This is actually a ship that's used? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, we sail an extensive schedule all through the Great Lakes and uh, this weekend brings us to Detroit. We sail with volunteers, we okay. sail with trainees, mm -hmm. uh, we also do a number of different programs both historically and scientifically based. This is a replica of a warship from 1812, right? Yes, it is. It's that is correct. This was uh, the relief flagship that was instrumental in winning the Battle of Lake Erie. It's exciting that they came, they made Detroit one of their stops. Well, it's it's exciting, but it's also pretty natural because uh, this was a focal point uh, of the War of 1812, War of 1812 and of course, uh, hands were exchanged between the British and the Americans, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's quite uh, unique to see the naval ships coming in. Wow, this doesn't happen every day. Look behind me, we've got a Navy warship, the USS DeWert, right here on the Detroit River, and it is mammoth. The 
really exciting for us to be here in Detroit. Uh, not many people get to come visit worships very often. Yeah. For some of the veterans, it's been really uh, sentimental. A lot of those that have never been on a worship before, uh, they're they're just excited to be here. Blown and, away. Yeah, blown I mean, away. it is huge. It's How big is it? It's 453 feet long. Explain to me, where are we at right now then? This is This is called the Foxel. spelled Four Castle. <laughs> four Castle. Okay, <laughs> so Four Castle. Foxel. <laughs> or the bow. Uh -huh. This is the front of the ship. Mm -hmm. This is where we have our anchor, our ship's bow, and most of our mooring lines. Ship's bell, shall we start the tour? Yep. <laughs> On board the USS DeWart, heading up to the pilot house. And I'm welcomed with such a beautiful view. This is gorgeous. Absolutely. One of my favorite views on board. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the pilot house. What kind of stuff do you tell the civilians? Well, this is where we drive the ship from. And this is the that, steering wheel? That's the ship's wheel. Look at this. I'm driving the big Navy ship. What else is so great is when, you, when you're giving a tour, everybody's invited to ask questions and yeah. find everything out. It's just really great, the camaraderie you're yeah. sharing with the public. We've got the best seat in the house. This is the captain's chair. He sits here, observes, makes sure everything's going A-OK -okay and everybody's doing their job safely. Not to mention a good place to work on my tan. So this is another really cool place you can yeah. take the people. Tell me about this. Yeah, so this is our Mark 75 76 millimeter deck gun. It uh, shoots 80 rounds per minute, oh, nine really? nautical miles. When's the last time this has been fired off? Uh, we shot it on our way up here, yeah. on the way to the Great Lakes, just for sh shooting practice. For shooting practice, yeah. yeah. How many different various guns do you have up here? Uh, we have numerous guns. We have our Mark 75 76, we have our closing weapon system on the aft, mm -hmm. and we also have uh, a bunch of 50 cows located around the deck. And you, and you guys use those periodically just for practice? And, we do. Yeah. We have to train. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Fun training, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is this behind us? This is pretty cool. This is called the Closing Weapon System. Uh -huh. It's uh, our anti-air weapon. Uh, it shoots 4,000 rounds per minute. So it's like the, the, the Rambo gun on board. <laughs> it is. So you get a missile My coming in and it's like boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's exactly. just hard to it's designed to shoot down. Well, thank you so much, Lieutenant Hinchoff, for showing me around. And uh -huh. thank you for protecting our waters. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Touring these U.S. Navy warships is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a lot of people and we are so happy that they picked Detroit as one of their stops.
Wow, look at this. After being closed down for renovations, the Detroit Historical Museum has reopened its doors in a big, grand way. They've got five brand new exhibits, and don't worry, your favorites are still here. They've just been enhanced with a facelift. Open spaces, great for parties, baby showers, you name it. So let's go take a look. The thing that's really so compelling is that it looks like a brand new place yeah. and we've been here for decades. Yeah. Right now we're standing in the Alice Gallery of Culture which looks at Detroit over the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. And not a series of dates and boring things, but what were the big stories that really make Detroit, Detroit? We look at things like music, architecture, design, things that people really connect with. And I love these larger than life photos that you've got. It's right. Just it's a perfect frame for the room. It is, and, and what we did is we took special care to highlight the, the buildings of Detroit that were built in that particular era. And this is something totally new too, correct, behind us? Well, it is, you know, and if you ask someone, Detroit Historical Museum, Kid Rock, how does that go together? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it's called the Kid Rock Music Lab, and it's called that because of a generous donation from Kid Rock, but what it is, it's the story of Detroit music for the past 100 years. So let's check out the Kid Rock Music Lab. Let's go. What we tell in here is the story of Detroit music. We look at some of the artists that many of us remember, from Aretha Franklin to Bob Seger to Madonna to Derek May of techno fame. We also look at some of the venues that really made Detroit really a heart of music in America. Baker's Keyboard Lounge, the Grandy Ballroom, the Rooster Tail, great artifacts. Those two keyboards on the stage there, one is Earl Van Dykes, who played with the Funk Brothers from Motown, oh, yeah. and the other is an organ used in the Greystone Ballroom. Really significant historic significance. And over here we have Detroit Music Trivia. It's really very fun. And uh, let's see how you do. <laughs> so, which Detroiter which was Detroiter? First? Oh my. Madonna maybe? Uh, no, Aretha Franklin. Yep. Oh yeah, Queen of Soul. <laughs> This gives you an opportunity to, to make, to uh, mix your own music. You can choose a song and determine how you want it to sound. You can add electric guitar, drums, you can add bass, acoustic guitar. It's a lot of fun to, to, to do some creativity. We're in the brand new Gallery of Innovation, and this Gallery of Innovation is very different in that it focuses on people, and people in the past, and people that are with us still today who are innovating in new and different ways in Detroit. The goal here is to learn a little bit about innovation, but also to inspire kids and families and others to be innovative, and one of the ways we do that is with our Innovation Station, which is a very uh, very interesting uh, interactive game that we developed especially for this new exhibit and it allows you to do one of two things. You can create your next favorite flavor of Fagel Pop oh, or you cool. can design the next car. Let's do a car. Car. Okay. okay. Oh, and then it's projecting up on the projecting big... Up there. Oh, that's neat. We want to build a car for $300 or less. Okay. And let's choose a power source. Choose gas. Okay. Now press drive. Let's see how it goes. Here it comes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, Bob, I want to thank you so much for uh, showing me what's new, and I'm going to take a look at some of the other things that we didn't get to together. Well, I appreciate you being here, and I know once you do that, you're going to want to come back with your friends and family because there's so much more than the surface treatment that we're able to give today. Oh, I already want to bring my kids back. Great. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>
Another brand new exhibit is the Doorway to Freedom. It recreates the Underground Railroad experience. And I think it's really best if you just kind of follow me and walk through. If you're quiet, stop and read about what they had, the slaves had to endure. Stay down. The river. And finally, freedom. Free at last. Well, there are a couple of exhibits that visitors wouldn't dare let the Historical Museum get rid of. One, of course, being the Glancy train exhibit, but it got a makeover too. It's now got high def monitors back there for the train coming around. They've added some new accessories. There's the tire that's along I-94, and if you look, I'm sure you'll find many new things. Couldn't touch this. And of course, another favorite, the streets of old Detroit. They're still here, but they've done lots of neat things. It's went high tech too. If you come over here, they've got this really cool exhibit. You kind of slide along. It ties in with all the different storefronts, like the pharmacy right here behind us. You can slide over to this, touch it, find out some more information in depth. And, of course, the neatest thing is that they've got the doors open. You can go inside the places, the storefronts now. And no more window shopping. Now you can actually come into the stores. You can't touch anything because we want to keep it and preserve it. But you can look at all these things instead of just from the window. So as you walk along, each different era has its own information station. So there are three of those. And then another really nice feature is make it handicap friendly and stroller friendly. And, of course, the piece de resistance a new storefront, the Sanders Collection, and you can go inside. So we've given you five more reasons to visit the Detroit Historical Museum. And don't forget, it's free admission that's free for all, all the time. There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. There's still time to rock the riverfront at the free concerts, and the Detroit Improv Festival has some hilarious headliners. Heart Plaza dishes up ribs and R&B. Then the Thunder Over Michigan air show soars into town. Hit the grandstands for the rush of NASCAR weekend, and enjoy a taste of Africa at the African World Festival. Find your fuzzy dice for the Woodward Dream Cruise and your quest for fantasy at the Michigan Renaissance Festival. Cruise in style along the Detroit River and the D is one of only three cities for the Eminem Rihanna Monster Tour. Downtown Royal Oak transforms into Ford Arts Beats and Eats and the Michigan State Fair is back bigger than ever in Novi. The silky sounds of the Jazz Fest heat up Hart Plaza and the streets of Hamtramck come alive with their Labor Day Festival. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. Downtown Detroit is home to a lot of fabulous restaurants, entertainment venues, and of course, festivals. Hart Plaza, in particular, can be a great place to relax and grab a bite for lunch, take a leisurely stroll along the river, but on weekends, it can be transformed overnight into a plaza of culture and entertainment, like the incredible annual African World Festival. The African World Festival is one of the largest international festivals in the country, and a few of our friends at the festival are going to fill us in. This is the museum's largest public outreach activity each year. It brings more than 350,000 people to downtown Detroit right here on our riverfront and shows off the many traditions and cultural activities of the African world. Not just the African Americans here in Detroit, but internationally folks come in and bring artwork, music, we have plays, we have a puppet show, we have artisans and vendors who come from Senegal, from Mali, from Brazil, and it's still free, admission free, family fun. And this allows for everyone in the community to come down and enjoy the flavor of the African world. Those African American activities and traditions as well as traditions from all around the globe. Hi, I'm Alicia Nails. I'm proud to be the Public Relations Director for the African World Festival, and I'd love to show you some of the participants in our marketplace. 
We're here with Kwame Owuku. He is a native of Ghana who's here in Detroit for 11 years. He's a featured artist at the African World Festival. The work I'm doing is the traditional African carvings because I'm using the traditional tools without using any power tools. And also I'm trying to put a little bit uh, touches on the on the piece I'm working on. Is a, it will be a table. These carvings is like something like a lost, lost art. I'm from New York, New York City. I bring a basket, everything I can sell, everything people like, for black African people, for white people, for everybody. I'm a naturopath, our biologist. This is like my own formula. It's been in uh, existence for about 13 years. This is for um, the treatment of certain types of skin disorders like eczema and psoriasis and infatigo and lesions and boils. <laughs> to come here to remember where you've been so you can make good choices about what you do today and in that way affect your future. They will see artifacts and items that were really there when certain uh, monumental things in hip hop went down. Car Plaza is made for playing and listening to music and the African World Festival brings you styles from around the globe, be it world beat, gospel, hip hop or jazz. You'll hear it all, all day, every day and not a bad seat in the house. The amazing cultural dance and traditional costumes are bright and lively and you can't help but be mesmerized and energized all at the same time. Of course, food is center stage here too. Bring an empty stomach and sample food from local eateries as well as an eclectic international menu. And like all festivals at Harp Plaza, most of the food is served up downstairs. So you get a break from the sun or any bad weather. Here we got grilled tilapia with some rice. Here we got fried whiteies with the two different types of rice. Here we got the best food in time with the best price. Every summer, make sure you get down to Harp Plaza on the third weekend of August for the annual African World Festival. What you're searching for And like a river runs There's always something more There's nations coming together Where the spirit flies So many songs we sang So many games we played And where the past left off We still embrace today With a heart of a champion And a hero's pride so complete, a heritage so deep, and no one can resist when Smokey sings. And so in letting you know, now get ready to go. It's all happening here. What's new in the
Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you would like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.